聊。So this workout today was 10 times two minutes in big gear. Come on, keep pushing. You got 15 seconds. Count it down. We reached VO2 max uh, improvement status, working on VO2 max. So we're right at 90% of max heart rate. So this is a VO2 max session for you. And just leg strength when it comes to cycling. I got my heart rate around 90% which we got it like top end today, 172. But essentially what we do, we have Zwift pulled up and for two minutes, I'll go in the biggest gear possible. And we wanted to hold over 360 watts. Uh, essentially we wanted, we wanted to hold over 120% of my FTP. So I would hold that for two minutes, which sucked and then two minute rest at around 140 watts, trying to bring heart rate down in the 130s. So it was that times 10. Treat every 10 seconds like it's the last 10 seconds. Okay. That works, push, pull, push, pull. Solid session, working on VO2 max and, uh, and leg strength. So I'm cooling down, I got seven minutes left. And right after this, we're hopping on the treadmill and we're gonna be working on cadence work. Increasing the turnover and cadence of my run, which is, if you're not aware, the number of times your feet hit the ground in a minute. So we'll cool down, hop right on the treadmill, which is about five feet from me right now. We'll do rounds of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. On, I mean, you're standing and straddling the treadmill and we set the treadmill to a really high speed, typically started around 10K speed. And essentially, you having to keep up with the moving treadmill that is gonna be very fast. It's either keep up or fall off the back. So we'll actually speed it up to where you are forced to hold a high cadence just to keep up with it. Where we take it up a notch is we start to play with incline. So we do it at 0% uh, incline for two, 2% 2 incline for two, 4% incline for two. So now you're really having to work to keep your cadence up, to keep up with the speed at that incline. And once you then drop it back down to zero, that cadence just comes naturally again because you're not having to work as hard. A way for you to track on your own that you are hitting the cadence is just to count for 20 seconds. Every time your left foot hits for 20 seconds, you want to be at 30 steps. And so each interval for the first 20 seconds, you count to see where you are. And then we adjust from there. 9.6 miles per hour.
on 9 point... What are we? 9.6? 9.9. .9. Okay. Just got up to 3. That's it. So it's just a little slower than a 6 minute mile. But essentially, I'll tell you what I do. Every time that back foot hits, I put my hand on the back of your hamstring and I, I lift it up immediately. Okay. And you just realize how long that back foot hangs back there and how quickly it should actually be coming off the ground is what we're trying to feel. And then also by me actually pushing force on that hamstring, you learn that that is the muscle that needs to be working to pick your leg up. You see how, your, how much your back foot hangs out there? Yep. yep. So that's what you should be feeling. Think about relaxing from the knee down, relax the foot. If you're not pushing off, the muscle that's being used is you're just pulling with that hamstring. You're just driving those knees past each other. How can I turn my legs over through this pain? Because I'll tell you right, right now, it's not you pushing off more, increasing your stride length. It's just not going to happen. You've got to turn it over. It's like. Michael, you know the Michael Jackson walk where he's going backwards yeah. like that, moonwalking? It's essentially, it feels like you're moonwalking going forwards because you're just kind of dragging your toes, running so easy, and then as you kind of get your rhythm going, you just pick your feet up a little bit more and a little bit more and open up the stride a little bit more. And all of a sudden, you're, you're moving. But yeah, moonwalking for recovery runs. Or any run, really. That's kind of how I feel right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, the moment has come. <laughs> the moment has come to eliminate the open turn and introduce the flip turn i've always avoided flip turns while swimming because well i, I don't know how to do them um and they've always intimidated me because i've i thought either my head was going to drive into the wall or into the bottom but today natasha is about to teach me the flip turn so here we go get ready for it Let's do it. The flip turn is not 100% yet, but we're at like a 75, 80% solution, um, which will save a lot of time on my time trial swim. For the 100 yard and 500 yard will come up soon again. So I'm gonna do one more flip turn for the day. Show you guys the progress we've made. I've never been one to do a flip, but in the water, it makes a difference. Here we go. Final of the day, best one yet. All right, baby. Go on more. Alright guys, 
Well, Coach Natasha brought in a little special surprise on this Friday for the VPN team. Valerie Hunt is here. She drove up or drove down from Dallas, Texas area, and she's working with us, the entire VPN team, to improve our running form. Uh, so a lot of us run here. We're either training for full marathons, half marathons, 5Ks. So it's just one of those things that when you join the VPN team, you naturally start running a little bit. So today she's going to work some mechanics and drills to improve our run overall as a whole team to make training and racing a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. Knowing all of you are into running or wanting to become better runners, a lot of you are preparing for the marathon, half marathon. I thought the coolest thing to do to help with form was to bring Valerie in from the day. She came all the way from Dallas to help you guys. And uh, so we appreciate your time coming here today. And I'm excited because she's helped me so much. She's going to help you guys a ton. I'm going to film you. And uh, I don't want you to sprint or anything. I'm just going to have you guys run back and forth a few times. I'll film you. We'll go over it. And this is the best part. It takes you about five minutes to understand it, the concept. And that's what I said. And then I'm going to take you through a few drills, which are fun, and you can do partners and bands, and you know, we, you've probably seen some of that. To again, just to sense and feel, and then you have something to practice when you go run. And then, of course, you have me. You can always check in, and then, or even film yourselves or each other, and then know what it is you're looking for. One of the main questions I always get on like Instagram and YouTube is, why am I getting shin splints, and how do I avoid shin splints? Right. Like, what is the best? Is that because of form? Yes. It's, and, you'll, and you'll see in just a second. The reason they get a shin splint, well, there's two reasons. Um, one is they're reaching their foot instead of just letting it drop, which we'll talk about today. And the second is they're not using elasticity of their muscle. And that is a huge one for all of us because we're endurance athletes. So you're like, you know, I run all the time. I swim all the time. Whatever it is you do all the time. 99% of runners are using what's called active muscle contraction. So they're like, like they're, they're putting their foot down and that's three times your body weight. Unfortunately, we think that that's what extends our stride, right, to reach. So that's kind of mentally how we're all doing that. And then all, I should have said a third reason is ankle mobility or lack of. So the nice part is you can, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I've shin splints, so I'm gonna stretch. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, instead of stretching, work on hopping and elasticity. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good to know. And I guess the second, like, most frequently asked question or comment I get is about heel strike. I was yeah. talking about, to Natasha about this today. Is heel strike actually an issue? No. And so can you explain, like, why heel strike is an issue and what people should be focused on instead of heel strike. Correct. Um, it's a great question. And, and really like even the word strike, if we think about foot strike, then that's what we're going to do. We're going to strike the ground. So when people say things like, I'm going to hit the pavement, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. pound the pavement, hit the ground. If I'm thinking about where to put the foot, then whether it's a heel strike, uh, mid foot strike, toe reach, whatever it is, it's, it's ahead of you. And anytime, you're reaching and it's ahead of you, then that is a deliberate active landing. So it's not that heel strike itself is a bad thing. It's that it's not gonna help you with your running. So then why think about it? Okay. And then once you switch to doing the correct action, then you will literally not strike anymore. When you think about running, what do you think of? Not running out of breath. Okay. <laughs> Just try to stay linear. Okay. Uh, soft feet. Only recently after working with Natasha, I think, Pulling my hamstring. Uh -huh. So I try to engage my hamstring okay. uh, rather than like push my quad. Right. So I'm going to switch how you think about your run because now you're going to think about running a little bit different. So the, de the definition of running is free falling. So running itself is free falling. Free falling is rarely done in running. But that letting go aspect in the run is where you find your speed. Most people have no idea the potential they have because they've never actually let themselves feel it. I'm a great example. I am not an athlete. I love to coach, but I spent a year racing and I was an 830 runner, 5K to marathon, same pace. So I started falling and I went from an 830 to a 630 with no change in VO2 or conditioning, simply not wasting time, as he says, 
on the ground. We're going to spend more time traveling, less time on the ground. One of the things that does that for us is going to be how quick we can pull, right? So we're going to work on just getting in our running pose, the fall and the pull, and then elasticity hop. So it's just going to be a very simple practice, but you will feel a little bit goofy. <laughs> so I'll give you that. So I'm going to be his partner for just a second. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to put my hand right here. Okay. He's not allowed to put weight on my hand, but he has to trust me that as soon as he pulls this foot up, I'll let this one go. Ready? Three, two, one, pull. Without putting any weight on me. Ready? Pull. Uh -huh. Ready? Pull. Pull. Don't put any weight on me. Ready? Pull. Pull. So no weight. Pull. So weight means that he would be pressing on my hand. Does that make sense? Okay. So do that with your partner. Just do like four or five. Well, that is Pull. <laughs> this is hard. Yeah, am I really? <laughs> okay, see where it is? Yeah, it should be on. Exactly. Ready, pull? Yes. Pull. Uh -huh. Solid stuff. Solid stuff, baby. So then the next step is to feel the fall with it, okay? So we'll do the same thing. Well, first we'll do. We'll keep it simple. You could actually use the rig if you want. And just go by, grab, just grab one of these pose. Yeah, so leave your arm out and try to look ahead and set it down. Remember when you're running, you're gonna have to find your fault point with your eyes, but you're feeling it with your center. So now, how do I, so here's two things. Travel actually happens only when both feet are off the ground. Traveling itself, the travel flight phase of running. And so, to initiate movement, we have to fall. So fall is the acceleration. So it goes acceleration, travel, right? It's hard to stay in place. So then we'll work on cadence next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab him. Here's your gas pedal. I'm gonna put my hands here. He's gonna fall, so look ahead. No, clear, so he's gonna come at you. And there I go, <laughs> both feet and fall? Bend your knees. Now just let your body go forward into my hands. All you got, bend your knees. Okay, keep going. I got you. Keep going. Okay. I'm looking down. I got you. Fall. Okay, now start to pull your feet. Yeah. Up, 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 up. Like repeatedly, like you're gonna run. Oh, gotcha. Ready? Up, 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 up. So a little quicker. Yeah. Now let me go. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. All right, now let's go together. Ready? Yep. Start to press into my hands. Oh, oh there you go. go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you don't, you don't want to hit things, right? No. You want. So this is pretty cool. You have what it's, it's called an S-like shape because I'm not a straight line, right? But we're falling as a straight line. It's like being in a plank, right? So if I was in a plank right now, who would call me out? Everyone. Everyone. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? So how would you correct me? Uh, Engage uh, degrees. Yeah, I mean, give me some kind of cue, something that would help me feel that something's wrong here, right? So when you're running, it's the same. I'm doing a plank, right? I'm falling, but I'm connected. So when we're running, we don't have, we're not doing like a crunch, but you're strong and you're using your center and the strength is holding these shoulders over hips. So this kind of stuff is just hip stability. She's gonna bend her knees a little bit more. Yeah. There you go. And, just it. Little bit more. Oh. and when she lets go, she's done this before. Instead of seeing, you know, big bouncy thing, you can see movement go forward. I'm not gonna hurt you, but just some people. Right, I'm gonna put my hands here, and he's gonna press Everybody. up into my hands. Press up and then drop, drop down. Drop, just drop your hips down. Now press up into my hands. Or you can yeah. do harder than that. Press up. Mm -hmm. Like she said, you won't be able to hold it for a long period of time in the beginning. 
the goal is to implement them and then like slowly. Well, I've watched you run. I try to do things like that. I'm like, I can't hold this for more than like half a mile and I'm already out of breath. So yeah. I'm trying to go too fast. Yeah, it's got to instill. I mean, it's got a muscle memory. Oh, like, don't drop the seat. That's crazy. Don't drop him. <laughs> Go this way. Yeah. See, it's really cool. And what's going on? Because all my races are getting canceled that I was signed up for because of COVID, understandably. Um, we are creating our own marathon. Okay, good. We're at Roca headquarters. We're in their gym. 